Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Analytics with Arjun. Coming off another L against the Titans, but we're going to move on. As you can see, I'm wearing my Good Vibes Club shirt, so so all good vibes up in here. And I'm actually really excited for this episode because it is the first episode where, where I will be debuting my fully new scouting report that I made public to anyone to use, to view, to play around with. Um, I'm super excited to preview it on the Minnesota Vikings that I'll be talking about. Uh, and again, going back to last week, it was a tough loss. Um, I thought the offense played fine. Justin Herbert was, was pretty good. Still, the defense is, is an atrocity. Pass defense has given up the most explosive plays of any defense in the league so far. So definitely a lot of things to clean up. But um, yeah, I mean, Chargers are 0-2 and they're, they're reeling right now. So definitely need a win. And right now they're about even money to win against the Vikings on the road. Uh, relatively healthy doesn't you know Bosa and Mac are, I think are both questionable but um, I mean really no excuses the Vikings are also 2-0 so it's it's desperation time for both teams but without further ado I do want to get into my new scouting report that I put together for the channel for anyone honestly to use and here it is this is the scout that's it the scout Um, it's a fully automated scouting report built to scout any NFL team uh, in the past three years, basically. And you can look at multiple years of data for a certain team if, if you want. And to, the way to find this, you go to my Twitter page at ArjunMenon100. It's the pinned tweet. You click the app. It's a pretty big report. I know I've gotten some people telling me there's a list issues with it loading. Um, you, you might get that issue again, like just one scroll of it. It's a pretty big report. And this is only the offensive section. Um, but at least for you guys, what I can do is preview the Vikings because I can, you know, host the report and, and go through everything myself. So we're going to be looking at Minnesota's offense and defense, their tendencies, like I normally do, but much more in depth. And for Minnesota's offense, because there's been a lot of continuity there, the same play caller, the same quarterback, same basically offensive line. They replaced Thielen with Justin Jeff or they replaced Thielen with Jordan Addison. I'm going to be using their last two years of data. So going back to 2022 when Kevin O'Connell took over up until this past week uh, against the Eagles. So you can see first thing we're going to look at just an offensive overview. Um, they're not, they haven't been that great of an offense. They rank 18th in EPA, their 10th in success rate, which that is a kind of a notable difference. That means they are pretty efficient down to down, but as you can see, you know, they kind of just, they have a lot of negative plays. Cousins turned the ball over. I think he had like 11 interceptions last year, took sacks. So that's going to bring down your EPA per play. They're about league average when it comes to passing the ball in the past two years, and they are terrible at running the ball. So they were about at the Chargers level at running the ball last year. Uh, under Kevin O'Connell, they do pass the ball a lot. So they have a 4.32 pass rate over expected. So given the down and distance and situation, they pass the ball about 4.3% more than expected. They have an 11.3% explosive rate, which ranks 12th. And on early downs, they have a negative 0.04 EPA per play. So I like to look at early downs because you want to stay ahead of the sticks. Um, and EPA, you know, using EPA is my main method of uh, efficiency. So just looking at how well they do at staying ahead of the sticks, they've been pretty bad at it. And they, you know, kind of uh, are forced to rely on Kirk Cousins to kind of bail them out, which I'm not sure if that's technically a situation you want to be in very often. Um, then we'll look at, uh, you know, looking at the run pass splits by down. Um, the boxes are highlighted if there's a 7.5% difference between the run rate and the league average run rate. Um, so you can see they do run the ball much less than the league average on every single down except first down. On first down, they run the ball about 6% less than the league average. But considering they rank fifth in pass rate over expected, you know, them running the ball less than the league average is to be expected. But this is where this new scouting thing, our new scouting tool that I built is much better. We break it down, run pass splits by down and distance. And this is where we can find those edges, we, where we can find those tendencies that the Chargers, you know, hopefully are keying in on going into this matchup. So you can see on second and one, they run the ball 81.8% .8 of the time. Now, again, 11 play sample size, it's not the biggest, but there there are things that I think you can pick up on. And this is one of them, um, you know, from my experience, even coaches will like sample sizes of five plays. And 11, I think, is a decent enough sample size. Second and one and third and one are mostly run down. So you can see they've run the ball on nine out of 11 second and ones 
going back to last year. Um, then otherwise they love to pass. Like again, this is a this is a passing team, second and second and seven through nine, second and ten plus, second and long. Basically, they're passing the ball over 76% of the time on third and two, which is interesting. Like most teams on third and two, some teams will treat it as a two down territory and run the ball on 18, uh, uh, 18 plays. The Vikings have uh, passed the ball on 16, 15, 15 of them, 15 of them. So they have an 83.3% pass rate on third and two. Again, something to key in on. Maybe even if they come on in heavy personnel on third and two, they're still going to pass the ball. Um, then breaking down their offensive formation efficiency. One thing to keep in note out of empty, they have the highest explosive rate of any team in the NFL in the past year and two weeks. Uh, they, they have an explosive play, which is defined as a, a, a play of 15 or more yards gained. They have a 22.3% explosive rate, which again is the highest in the NFL. Um, but overall they are, you know, kind of league average at running plays out of empty. So again, that discrepancy is interesting. Um, but something I think is noteworthy. Uh, they run, they do run most of their plays from under center. As you can see, they run 50.3% of their plays from under center, as opposed to about 40% of their plays from shotgun. From shotgun, they have the fourth highest success rate of any team in the league, 11th highest EPA per play. Again, you can pause the screen and, and take a look at everything. But it's interesting, like even under center, compared to what other teams' pass rate over expected is under center, they're they're the number one, like they throw the ball above what is expected of them when they're under center of more than any team in the league. So I definitely thought that was interesting, but they really struggled to run the ball. They are, they've been the worst team at running the ball out of shotgun. Again, just something to keep in note that if they're in shotgun, it's probably going to be an inefficient run for them. And we want them to run the ball out of shotgun. They are top 10 offense passing out of shotgun last in the league at running. Then just breaking down the run pass splits by offensive formation, as you can see, um, from under center, they have more of a 50-50 split or closer to 50-50 split from under center. But from shotgun, they pass the ball about 83.6% of the time. Um, and then just kind of breaking that down by uh, breaking this table by down, uh, you can see under, you know, not a lot of big tendencies or at the obvious ones, but you can see on second down from uh, from shotgun, they pass the ball about 83.3% of the time. On third down from under center, on 16 plays, they run the ball about 87.5% of the time. Um, so again, you know, if they come out in shotgun on third down, it's going to be a pass. They come out under center on third down, it's probably going to be a run. And then again, just breaking that table down even more by down in the distance. So again, you know, all of this is kind of just meant to give to first start off with a broad overview, looking at efficiency and uh, just the overall run pass splits by formation. And then we break it down, uh, you know, just make everything big to small. So break it down by down, then break it down by down and distance. And so hopefully there you can just continue to find those edges, those tendencies that the Vikings have. So, you know, second and one under center, 81.8% run rate. I think we already covered that, um, you know, I, I, I third and one from under center, 85.7% run rate, um, third and two from shotgun, 90% pass rate. So just, you know, some of those things to pick up on. And again, I'm using two years of data. Um, things might change in 2023. There might be, you know, with Josh Oliver in the full, they could be running the ball more or, or passing the ball more, who knows. Um, but again, I think with with more data in the 2023 season, we'll find a lot more tendencies. And, you know, there, there are teams that have a lot bigger tendencies than the Vikings do. Um, then looking at their personnel efficiency up here, we can see they've run 11 person, they've run 11 personnel 69%, 69% of the time under Kevin O'Connell. Um, again, can't run the ball out of 11. They're the worst team at running the ball out of 11. Above average at passing the ball, they have a 45.6% success rate, which is 12th best in the NFL. Uh, they are the most explosive team to out of 21 personnel. So this is typically your CJ Ham with the running back package. I'm not too sure if they run uh, po their pony packages all that often. Pony basically means two running backs. So last year would have been Dal uh, Dalvin Cook and Alexander Madison. This year, it's probably Madison and Ty Chandler, but I don't know if they trust Ty Chandler enough uh, to use him in those pony packages. So it's most likely the CJ Ham plays, but yeah, they are the most explosive offense out of 21 personnel in the past year and two weeks. Um, looking at their run pass splits by personnel, there isn't anything that really stands out. Um, you look at the run pass splits by offensive formation. Again, not, not a lot that's, that stands out. Kevin O'Connell, I think, does a good job of mixing up run and pass. Uh, by whether he lines up in shotgun or under center. 
Um, I guess the big one is when they line up in 11 personnel and they're in shotgun, it's most likely going to be a pass. But again, mo more, a lot of those situations come on first down because, or, or come on uh, expected pass situations. Um, if we break down run pass splits by personnel and down in distance, we can see, okay, second and one and 12 personnel, they've only run six plays. Uh, but they've run on five of them. Again, not a huge tendency, not something that you're going to like circle that multiple times and read on the report, but still you know, something notable. Third and one, 22 personnel. So two tight ends, two backs, uh, five plays run, four of them have been run. So 80% run rate. But again, a lot of these are kind of those expected uh, pass percentages uh, or expected run pass plays that you expect in, in late downs. And then just looking at, how they've performed against defenses. So looking at how they've done against number one defenders in the box, um, you know, they faced, uh, they faced the most uh, plays of six defenders in the box. Um, they pass 71% of the time against that uh, bad league average in terms of EPA, slightly above average in terms of success rate. Um, they do pretty well running the ball against light boxes, but you know, that's not something that, you know, I, I think should be commended for. You should be able to run the ball against light boxes. Um, but I, I think overall, Again, nothing much that really stands out from this table. Um, they are one of the best teams against base defenses. And this is something the Chargers don't typically run, especially with uh, Eric Hendricks injured and uh, Dayon Henley potentially playing injured. Um, you know, the Chargers are not going to be a base team. In fact, they have more DBs than they have, or they have more DBs than they can use. So I'd expect a lot more nickel and dime, which is where, you know, the, the Vikings do struggle. But against base, the number one success, they've been the most successful team and have the third highest explosive rate. Um, you know, they like to get, if they if you're able to get uh, three linebackers on the field, I think that is a bad thing uh, for the Chargers defense. And again, just it helps the Vikings offense based on how well they've performed in the past. Um. Against defensive personnel, again, they've just done exceptionally well against base. So a 3-4-4 front uh, or, yeah, 3-4-4 defense, the Vikings have done really well against. 4-1-6, uh, which is a dime, they've done somewhat well against. Um, they they have struggled, it seems, against 2-4-5 uh, defenses. So, again, your nickel package is uh, 31st in EPA per play, 31st in EPA per pass. You talk, I mean, Chargers do run 2-4-5s. That's typically when you'll have like at Sebastian Joseph Day and Morgan Fox with their hands in the ground, Bosa and Mack with their, uh, you know, with their hands not in the ground and standing up over the tackle. Like those are where the Vikings have struggled. So again, that is an edge that could be had. And then just looking at how they've done against the number of rushers. Um, typically, I'll only look at uh, four pass rushers or five, four, five and six pass rushers because that's what happens the most often. Not, there's no real big takeaway i guess the biggest one is they're very not explosive uh, they're they're not explosive uh, I, I, when teams send exactly five pass rushers they have an 11.8 or 11.9 percent explosive rate which ranks 30th in the past year in two weeks um overall against the blitz they rank 23rd in epa 13th in success rate and 28th in explosive pass rate so again have struggled against the against the blitz in the kevin o'connell era so Something to keep in mind, we know Staley's designer blitz packages are one of the best qualities he has, so could look to uh, dial that up this weekend. And then real quick, uh, just to look at the run game tendencies. Um, not, uh, I guess the one thing that stands out, they do run the ball very well outside right tackle. So uh, like um, outside of Brian O'Neill, who, who's their right tackle, uh, they have a about 56% success rate. Uh, which is higher than the league average. You can look at EPA. It's also about 0 0.1, which is higher than the league average. So they really, uh, you know, they run the ball better than the league outside of right tackle. And that's something that's where Khalil Mack usually plays. So definitely going to have, it's definitely something that needs to be kept in mind going forward into this game. Um, and then pass game tendencies. We can see here with this table, they, Kirk Cousins likes to throw, has thrown the ball the most often right and short so right between one and nine yards and then left between one and nine yards uh and he's he's been the most efficient kind of throwing in this middle intermediate i think that's typically the most efficient place to throw in that 10 to 19 read uh 10 to 19 yard region uh, in the middle of the field um but 
he doesn't throw there that often. He throws there only 6.3% of the time. But I think this table is, is is good if you want to pause it and just look at, you know, where the green is or where the red is. Uh, you know, Kirk definitely has his moments depending on where he throws. Um, doesn't it really have a lot of places where he has a low EPA or success rate targeting a specific part? So the Chargers are going to definitely have to uh, defend every blade of grass against Justin Jefferson. Um, I don't really think I need to go through the player stats. I think people already know the Vikings personnel stop Justin Jefferson and uh, stop Jordan Addison is the main two. Um, and then I guess since I'm using 2022 data, I'm not sure how useful this is. Um, and so I guess we'll we'll just go on to their defense and, and I'll I'll go through this quick because it's going to be a very small sample size for where Brian Flores, but you can see right now uh, slightly above league average in terms of EPA success rate. Pretty good at stopping the pass, not as good at stopping the run. Uh, teams run the ball, and this is mostly the Eagles thing. They've run the ball about 5.8% more than expected. But again, but again, the Eagles just ran the ball all over the Vikings anytime they wanted to. And the Vikings have also had, uh, have only allowed explosive plays on 4% of their defensive plays, which is the second best mark of any defense in the league. Um, typically under Flores, they've run a 2-4-5 front the most often, and I mean, just look at this. Look at all the green, man. Look at all the green. And again, this these two rows, you could probably take out it's two plays in one play, but that is a lot of green. The only uh person or defensive personnel they haven't done well when well in is uh three three five. Uh they have the 21st best EPA among all NFL teams out of three three uh, three three five defense. Um they really struggled at stopping the pass. Teams have averaged a 0.82 EP per pass. I'm not sure how many passes that is actually, but again, a lot of this is, is very small sample size. So not too many big takeaways as if I was doing this in like week 12 when I had more data. Um, looking at their defensive personnel usage by down. So you can see 245 personnel is their preferred go-to personnel on first and second down. Uh, but on third down, they go into this one, four, six defensive personnel. Flores loves to do that. But, uh, you know, I don't know what the package is called, but they line up everyone along the line of scrimmage and will drop one, drop, drop three or send everyone and send the house. So uh, it, it's definitely a fun thing to watch, but definitely not fun if your quarterback is going against it, which is what we have to deal with this weekend. Um, looking at what he does in terms of the number of DBs he uses, uh, you know, he uses nickel the most often. Um, he's he has one more play of base than dime over a lot of nickel, though. He has it just hasn't been great, uh, you know, below average in terms of stopping the pass, stopping the run below average overall. They have been really, really good out of dime personnel, and really they're only using that in pure passing situations. So if it's third and long, like you can see here, like they've they use the on, on third down, you're gonna get dime. You can see here with this with this table. Um, all 13 of the Vikings dime packages have come on third down. They've used dime on 59% of their third down so far. Um, so that's definitely something to keep in note. If they're going to bring out that extra corner or extra safety, you know, you know, you're not going to have that, that second linebacker there. So it's probably going to be a bit tougher to pass the ball. And this is, this is, these are two tables I kind of like to look at. It's called, I call it matching personnel grouping. So based on what the offense does, how does Brian Flores counter that? So in 11 personnel, he matches 11 with, with nickel. Out of 12 personnel, he also matches it with nickel and not base, which I think is interesting. Um, and then 13 personnel, he'll match it with base. 21, he matches it with nickel. So you know, Chargers are not a big 12 personnel team. They have a lot more good receivers than they do good tight ends. Just something I thought was, was interesting here. And then uh, looking at how they match personnel with defensive personnel, um, in 11, they like to match it with mainly a 2-4-5 look or a 1-5-5 look. Um, and I'm guessing this is a lot of their third down stuff. And then out of 12, they match it with that 3-3-5 look. So, you know, we talk about in 12, they'll come out of nickel. and 12, they'll most likely come out in their 3-3-5, which is where, as you can see up here, they've struggled the most at in terms of defending the pass or defending the run. Small sample size, obviously, but still worth noting. Um, Brian Flores, you know, he blitzes 57.7% of the time. It's not It's not going to be fun. They haven't been good, okay? They haven't been good when blitzing. So that's the positive part. The Vikings cornerbacks are not good. Byron Murphy's good, but the rest, I, I, I Caleb Evans, I think, and Makai Blackman, like, they are not good NFL corner. So if they do send five rushers, they do send six. If they send 
you know, more than four overall, they've struggled. Um, and so I think that plays into the Chargers advantage, but it's it's crazy. They've sent they have more plays with six pass rushers than they than they do four. So that that's just Brian Flores for you, right? So got to be prepared for that. Your pass protection better be on point. This can't be a game where your pass protection fails you. Uh, it, it's funny, like on first down, they have more plays with six pass rushers than they do any other number of pass rushers. Um, and then on third down, they they did a lot of drop, you know, rush three, drop eight against the Eagles. I'm not sure if we're going to get that against the Chargers. Still worth noting, 77.8% blitz rate on first down. Like Brian Flores is is, is a madman. Um, blitz rate by number of DBs. You know, he ranks number one in terms of blitz rate when running nickel. Um, and then looking at defenders in the box by down, uh, it's still early in the season. I'm not sure there's too much to take away from that. Where do the Vikings struggle uh, in terms of where teams pass against them? Well, they really struggle when teams pass in that one to nine range in the intermediate part of the field. You talk about their linebackers. I think it's Ivan Pace. Um, Ivan Pace. And I always I always forget the second one. But, the, you, you know, there's a reason why Brian Flores goes dying on third down. It's because their linebackers are not good. So targeting that intermediate part of the field, one to nine range, that is where, you know, teams have made their money so far this year against the against the Vikings teams have completed about 35 or I guess it's only three passes. So it's again, very small sample says, I don't I'm not, I shouldn't be even reading too much into this, but again, this table will be much more helpful as the year goes on. Um, and then in terms of this, you can see uh, they have, re they really struggled in the past two weeks in terms of runs up the middle. Uh, you know, the Eagles and Bucks averaged about a 67, 68% uh, percent success rate running the ball up the middle. So just like straight behind the center and they averaged about a 75% success rate running between the center and the right guard. So Corey Lindsley, Jamari Sawyer, buck up. If we're going to run the ball, it's going to be behind your two asses. <laughs> so I think that's, that's the best way to put it. And that gra this graph with EPA kind of shows that. Well, uh, that's going to wrap it up uh, for the report. The one thing I want to, I want to touch on every single or almost every single table I showed you, the run pass splits, the efficiency numbers. In my in my app, I made sure to mention it, but all of the tendencies come in non-garbage time, uh, non-two-minute situation, so no end of half, no end of game, and outside of the low red zone. So think about the opponent's 13-yard line to uh, you know, your own uh, your own one yard line. So the minus 99 to the plus 13. So you might think, oh, there, you know, there are plays missing here. There's plays missing here. I filtered some of them out. That's just how, from my experience, coaches like these things done. Um, and again, the, the whole goal of this whole report and video is, is to try to make it as real as possible for you guys as like you're in the building. Um, and so I hope you enjoyed. I think I probably went on a bit longer than my normal videos. I'm hoping it, it's not like this anymore and I can shorten my own report down and, and just find those tendencies easier. But I did want to kind of walk you through what it would it's going to look like going forward. And again, it's, um, I promise you guys it won't be that long, but um, hope, hopefully everyone has a great, great rest of the week. Enjoy a great weekend of football. Hopefully Chargers come out with the win, but even if not, it's all good. Um, but thanks, thanks everyone for watching and as always, bolt up.